Hello, my friends. Welcome to the much awaited topic of the nursing scandal. I'm sure you've heard of the nursing scandal. Let me know if you've heard of the nursing scandal. Basically, a bunch of people got fake nursing degrees that they just paid a bunch of money for, uh, became nurses, even though they never went to nursing school. Terrifying. And they got busted by the FBI. And this has been going on for like... (laughs) seven years. Yikes. Uh, we're going to talk about that. We are going to talk about doTERRA. I love, (laughs) I love, I'm very into the anti MLM world. So when this popped up on my feet, I was like, yes, doTERRA, they sell like essential oils and some doctors, like some physicians and nurse practitioners were saying that you could eat these and it would help with COVID and they got in trouble for it. Yay. We love to see it. We have, um, zombie deer because why not? (laughs) Hello, 2023, coming out strong with zombie deer. We have Utah uh, waking up and being the villain and banning care for transgender youth, even though every medical association says that's not a good idea. They said, let's do it. And then we have some good news at the end where Mr. Beast uh, helped a bunch of people get their eyeballs back and be able to see, and the internet hated for him, him for it because <laughs> why not? Why not? Welcome, everyone. Let's see what this week has for us. Um, I was mildly late because there was a giant bang in my house somewhere, which is always alarming when you have a three and a five-year-old. And my husband said it wasn't me because I texted him. I was like, are you okay? And he was like, yeah, I'm fine. Why? I was like, there was a huge crash. He's like, no, but neither of us have investigated it. So that's where we are. If I disappear suddenly, it's because someone has come to notify me of what the crash was. But anyway, I have a poll over on the, I think it should show up somewhere on the YouTube chat. If you are here watching live, hello, welcome. Let me know how you're doing this evening. What are you drinking? I'm having, I have tea, I have coffee and water because I've been sick all week. (laughs) So I'm hoping, hoping we're all just going to be fine. I was like, honey, caffeine and water. We're going to get through it and cough drops. And, um, if you're on the replay crew, hello and welcome to you as well. Uh, we'll see where that poll goes. I'll leave it up for a little while, basically saying, should the nurses be charged in this scandal or just the ringleaders? Because right now it's just the ringleaders and spoiler, uh, (laughs) no, thank you. I think, uh, everyone should go down with it because you don't accidentally fall into a scam like this, right? You don't all of a sudden be like, wow, everyone says nursing school is hard. And all I had to do was pay $10,000 and I got through it. That seemed like it was fine. No, (laughs) no, my dude, if you're experiencing that, absolutely not. Okay. Let us pull up, take a look and see. Yeah. Diana's on my level. Diana's like, they should serve jail time here, 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 here. Mr. Midwife's on that same brainwave. We're here. We got it. If you uh, know anything extra details about this, feel free to share them in the chat. I am not like the world's best internet sleuth. I'm trying, but uh, I also like, there's so many different stories coming out about it. I'm going to give a big overview picture. And if you guys know the extra deets, by all means, share them. So what we have going on here is um, I'm using an article from nurse.org, which is like, not the best, but it had the condensed best bits all inside of it. So we're going to use it. Dislike some of the points they kind of make in it and we'll attack those, you know. Um, so on Wednesday, January 26th, 2023, it was announced that several Florida based nursing programs issued over 7,600 fake nursing diplomas and certificates in a coordinated effort, uh, between local state and federal officials. They arrested 25 people, the ringleaders that were in cahoots about this. They arrested them. What did they name this? They went full on corny. They went operation nightingale. We could have gone so many other, I mean, I'm no like Florence fan, but, uh, I feel like we could have, there would have been so many better, like there's so, I don't know, leave me what you think we should have called it down below, but operation Nightingale, that sounds, um, dumb, (laughs) sounds real dumb. Uh, we could have called it like placebo effect. That would have been a great option. Literally so many other things, but they called it operation Nightingale after Florence Nightingale, um, And, uh, it happened in three colleges that they know of so far. Friends, I am going to be real with you. This is happening in more than three colleges. Okay. This, they've been looking into this for a long time since I believe 2016. I promise you, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Oh, and did I tell you where these colleges are? You have one guess. You have one guess of where these colleges were located because why would it happen literally anywhere else other than Florida? (laughs) because of course it happened in Florida. So 
it's my opinion that this is, uh, there are way more schools. There are way more licenses out there because the market is ripe, right? We have a nursing shortage where the shortage is really that hospitals and healthcare systems can't retain nurses, but we won't pay attention to that. Um, we need nurses, right? And so, and it's, there's not enough nursing schools because again, nursing schools don't pay their teachers very well. So no one wants to work at them problem. Uh, so there's a ripe market, right? For some fraudly fraud. And here we are. Here we are. We arrive at this doorstep. So um, we have these, these situations going on. Let me tell you how they basically worked these schemes, right? So there were three different nursing schools that basically the people that were in them saw this opportunity and they were like, wow, we are only allowed to have like 30 people. We have the capacity when you get licensed as a nursing school and you're accredited, the accreditation people kind of, and the board of nursing tell you how many seats you're allowed to have in your program, right? Mine had, I think 30, uh, and that seems to be fairly average, right? They tell you, you can have this many and they said, okay, we'll fill those 30 spots. Uh, I wonder if we can slide a few more by. So these were actual nursing schools, right? That basically decided we could have normal nursing students, right? So we have the cover of everything is okay and just keep pushing that along. And then we can also on the side for $10,000 offer an LPN certificate. Uh, and for what is it? 17,000, I believe you can acquire yourself. Um, you can get an unregistered nurse degree saying that you went to school and you became a registered nurse. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with all of this in general, usually like LPN programs, I want to say are two to three years, including prereqs, right? That's like all the classes, anatomy, physiology you have to take to get into them. They include classroom time, those prereqs plus clinical, a lot of clinical, right? Because you want people to go and actually interact with other humans and like see them first. And <laughs> Your first day of your job should not be the first time you're like, oh my gosh, human. <laughs> wow. This is fun. No, many, many, many hours of clinical, not at these, obviously, where they just handed you over your diploma. That's not involved here. Um, and for a registered nurse program, you are looking at about four years, right? About two years of prereqs, two years of actual nursing school. So these are, you know, it's an, a hefty investment of time, right? And uh, I can understand why one might see. And then, you know, you get some TikTok ad and it's like, hey, do you want to do this? But like literally with none of the work, just the money, I can see... I, I can see why they made this deal. Anyway, three of them did. Uh, we're very, very naughty. The names of those schools are, let's see, we have Siena College. I'll share this with you. This is the actual uh, notice from the United States Department of Justice. You know, when you have that header, <laughs> you screwed up. <laughs> You screwed up, my friend, if you're getting a notice from these people. We have the Siena College in Broward County, Florida, Palm Beach School of Nursing in Palm Beach County, Florida, and Sacred Heart International in Broward County. So these are actual nursing schools that are accredited. That's the most terrifying part. It's like if you're accredited, basically at there's two major nursing organizations that accredit people and they come and they look and say, do, does your curriculum right match up with like, is it kind of standardized across all of nursing school? We have a lot we could say about the accreditation of a nursing school. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty garbage. There's not a lot of uniformity. Um, but they looked at these and they said, you know what, you're fine. So these were legitimate nursing schools. And then the leaders, the ring leaders said, you know what I mean? You know what we could do is we could just also have normal, you know, students going through the whole slog of the whole thing, but we could also just have people pay us and we'll just kind of like hand them over this diploma so that when they come and evaluate our school, we have a legitimate school going on. And then on this side, we just print a couple more diplomas. Now, I don't know how, how this worked on the back end, right? Because you would have to only be able to have like 30 seats. So I don't know why no one like clued in and was like, oh, that's weird. Like this school's only approved for 30 people to graduate a semester and they have like 60, but you know, I'm sure it's fine. You know, questions were not asked. It's fine. So that's how this worked is you could just go and pay and bypass all of it. There's the people doing the real thing. And then the people doing the not real thing, paying 10,000 for an LPN and 17,000 for an RN. And there they go off on their little merry way, <laughs> getting their degree. Now, only of all of those, right? 
um, about, so that just gives you the graduation, right? It gives you the fake degree to move forward. Now that does not automatically make you a nurse, right? This grit gives you the ability to, not the real ability, but the perceived ability to sit for your LPN or your registered nurse. So you're going to be a nurse. You're going to be an LPN. You're going to be a, a registered nurse. You can then sit for the, um, NCLEX, either the NCLEX PN or the NCLEX RN, right? And when you go to take that exam, that's the licensing exam for nurses. When you go to take that, they ask you a bunch of questions. They say, Hey, did you go to nursing school? You have to be like, yeah, you have to send them in your transcripts. These people got transcripts with this whole deal for their nursing school because it was real. Sally, they did not have clinical. <laughs> that was the problem. They did not have to do clinical. <coughs> Excuse me. They didn't have to do class. They didn't have to do anything. They just got to pay their money and uh, off we go. Um, so <laughs> they go to take their test. And the test asks them, did you do all your clinical hours? And this is where it really gets me, where you can't say they didn't know, right? Um, you can't, because some people, hang on one second, I'm going to take a drink of water. My whatever, I think I had the flu. It was not fun. I was in bed for many days. You can't say that they just didn't know and that they went into this totally like, oh my gosh, they're just as ripped off as you. No, anyone with a brain, <laughs> right, would know. I didn't go to a real nursing school. <laughs> I didn't do clinical and I didn't go to class. <laughs> like, you're not being like, wow, I didn't know that that was not real nursing school. So I've seen a lot of people saying that, no, false. And you also have to, when you go to take the NCLEX, it's like, did you go to a school that made you do all the questions or like do all the classes. Did you have to do the thousands of hours of clinical? Did you? And they were like, yeah, 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 my friend, I did. They did not. Spoiler. They did not. About a third of all the 7,000 to like 2,400 um, ended up passing the NCLEX, right? So there are the good news. <laughs> good news is of the 7,000 that they've told us about, because again, there's more, <laughs> there's more, my friends. There's no way this is the end of the things. Um, of the 7,000, 2,400 passed the NCLEX. There were in this bunch, a group of people who were already nurses. They were already LPNs from legitimate programs that had gone and tried to get like paid for their RN. Uh, they, I feel like are even more shysty if we're being totally transparent because they knew beyond a shadow of a doubt how, ske like, how sketchy this was. Uh, but they are the, probably the ones that passed the NCLEX because they were LPNs already, right? They already were nurses. And so they got the general gist. Um, I'm sure some other people probably passed it because they took NCLEX prep courses, right? You take a couple of those, you figure out how to pass a standardized test. You know, there you go. You can learn how to take the NCLEX, right? Uh, would it be easy? No. That's why a lot of people took it in New York, <laughs> because New York, right? Because when you take your, you go to nursing school, it doesn't matter what school you go to nursing school in. If you find a state, if your school's accredited, most schools, uh, who, if your school's accredited by the big two, which is like CCNE and ACEN, I think, um, If you go to one of those schools, your board of nursing in whatever state is probably going to say, yeah, it's fine. You can be a nurse here. These schools were accredited. So most boards of nursing were like, yeah, it's fine. You can come here and take your test. You can go take your test wherever you want. Um, like I went to school in Delaware. I immediately sent my NCLEX results to Michigan because that's where I was going to live. So these people went to school in Florida took the NCLEX and sent the results. A lot of them, they tried to get a license in New York because in New York, unlike many other States, you can take the NCLEX as many times as you want, my friend, without having to do any remediation. And that's weird compared to other States and a lot of other States. So the NCLEX again, is that licensing exam in order to become a LPN or a registered nurse. And 
most states, you fail it once, they say, oh, that sucks. Pay us your money again, take it again. You fail it the second time, they say, man, that really sucks. Pay us your money and take it again. But if you fail it the third time, there's usually a remediation course you have to take, right? Where they say, hey, we get that you're probably not very good at standardized tests. You probably have crazy mad test anxiety. Uh, have it be known out there, my friends. I have known many phenomenal nurses who have failed the NCLEX several, several times, like four times, five times. They're great nurses. They went to real nursing school. They just sucked at general standardized testing. I hear you. I am that way. But New York, uh, unlike most other states who say, hey, if you fail three times, you have to take this little course. It's like six weeks long. And it's a refresher of nursing school. Just kind of like give you the gist. Let's try to get you up to speed. Not in New York. <laughs> New York's like, you know what? Keep trying. Just keep taking it. You have to keep paying for it. But that's where a lot of these nurses got licensed through because they were like, well, I didn't go to nursing school. So I don't really know these answers, but I'm just going to keep taking this test. <laughs> Here we go. Let's just keep on taking it again and again and again. And eventually about 2,400 of them passed. And then they went all over the country, right? Because once you have a nursing license, especially in New York, New York looks good. They're considered a... Like they have a lot of requirements, right? A lot of background each type test type stuff. Then you can transfer your nursing license anywhere in the country after you get a license. So that's why they did. So they're all over. They're all over the country in like all 50 states. Um, they have several states have now come out and said, uh, you know, you have to revoke your nursing license. You got to give that back. Uh, they're not taking it back. I don't know why they're saying like, please give it back. <laughs> they're asking for them to re surrender their license. I'm like, no, no friend, you need to go in there and like really get it. Uh, and they're trying to undercover more. All 50 States in the U S were notified their boards of nursing were notified that, Hey, my dude, <laughs> you, you need a, you have, you might have some, uh, <laughs> intruders in your midst. They were all told. <clears throat> um, Thanks, Jazzy. I am taking. If you hear me mute for a minute, it's just because I'm coughing. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, there should be evaluation of uh, skills rather than just a test. The way we test for nurses in this country, I mean, this is proof, right? If you don't even go to nursing school and a third of your class can still pass, we've got problems, right? And you're also missing all the people like all the great nurses who just suck at taking tests like I do and standardized tests make you want to like vomit. I think we test atrociously and it should be much more hands-on skills based, but we don't have the staff for that. So, you know, what do we do? Um, I agree, Mr. Midwife. So this is, in my opinion, a go straight to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200 situation. I think, let's see what you guys think in your poll. <laughs> How do I pull it up? Okay. I think along with 89% of you that, um, I'll end our poll. These nurses should go straight to jail, immediate jail. They knew what they were doing. They knew this was a shortcut. How crappy is it that so many people are receiving health care from people who never went to nursing school? Excuse me. Like how mad would you be if that was your family member? Um, I just can't, I just can't like, we're already so short staffed from nurses who like, went to at least nursing school. And then you're adding this into the mix. It's like making health. It's one, it's devaluing your profession, right? Cause it's just like mixing all of these people in with it. We are like, please no, <laughs> people are already kind of angry with us. And it's, um, then you could be cared for by one of these people and it's just immediately no, but they're not going to jail. Um, yeah, I agree. Jazzy, you are absolutely endangering the public. Um, and I agree uh, with Mr. Midwife that they should be charged with assault. Um, because how vulnerable are you as a patient when you're in the nursing care of someone, right? They are looking and touching and feeling and asking questions and very in on a very vulnerable part of your life. They didn't go to school for that. Like they have none of the requirements that they actually need in order to be doing that. I would feel super violated if I found out, oh, you were just someone that decided you were going to pay 17 grand and then train yourself to take a test and you have no <laughs> like skill, like no background to do this. Like heck no, heck no. We already have plenty of 
yikers nurses who went to nursing school. Uh, we don't need even more yikers ones who didn't go to nursing school, right? Like just now. So that happened. Um, lots of states, like I said, are coming out and being like, we caught some, we told them to hand over their licenses. I think they should be prosecuting them. I think you should be like, yeah, you knew what you were doing. Like I said, a lot of places have been like, oh, these poor people are like victims of this scheme. And I'm like, no. Oh, you want to know how much money they made from it? This is good. The scheme has been going on since 2016. So like, let that sink in for just a minute. Like, This is not new. They have been aware of this happening since 2016. And this little side hustle has earned these people $114 million. So if you think once again, that this is just these three schools and it is not all over the country, you are deluding yourself because that's a pretty handsome little side hustle, right? <laughs> there we go. Um, <laughs> there we are. So far, there's no lawsuits. There is a lawsuit of some people who are suing the school, like students who are trying to school the school, which I'm like, no, dude, <laughs> sit down, sit back down. You were trying to scam everyone. But so they're trying to sue them. I hope they start prosecuting the actual people because you know what you're doing if you're trying to take that big of a shortcut. Absolutely no way you don't know what you're doing. No, we do not accept it. Absolutely no. Um, the schools advertised it because uh, I was like, how did they even get away with this? You know, how would you, as a student, I just couldn't fathom being like seeing an ad and being like, oh, wow. <laughs> I don't have to do any of this. Great. I was like, how did they advertise it? So the schools advertised it as a shortcut for students to tr skip traditional nursing programs that require extensive clinical hours and classroom training. Uh, some of them were already nurses. They were already LPNs who wanted to become registered nurses. Uh, and they did seem to really prey on South um, Florida's Haitian American community, which is crappy, but again, crappy to also be like, yeah, like you got to know <laughs> there's no way around it. You've got to know that this is very, um, super duper sketch friends. If you ever see a nursing program, just in case you are unaware, if you ever see a nursing program that doesn't require clinicals at all, it is fake. Okay. Not a RN to BSN program, right? Not just the, once you're a registered nurse already, that doesn't count. Um, <laughs> yikes. Okay. That's a scam. Do not PESCO. Do not do that. Or we will send you to jail. The nurse Liz jail. Okay. Um, the, they kind of came around it and this is what was like weird about the article for me. They said the demand for nurses is high and continues to grow. Um, it's a shame that these in certain people and institutions connected to the nursing profession try to circumvent its educational requirements, like, um, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, well, there is a big demand. And I've seen, I've seen a few articles that like say that they're like, well, there is a big nursing demand. <laughs> like, no, nope, that's weird. Nope. Nope. We're not going to, um, we're not going to say that this is like totally fine. <laughs> we're not going to go there and, and do that. Okay. So that's what we have going on here. Right. Watch out. <laughs> I guess we all have to carry our transcripts with us now and uh, go from there. <laughs> like, be like, no, I'm like a real, a for real, for real nurse. Um, I just can't. I cannot. I cannot. Um, Queen Nana, uh, I do not know if I think they were associate degrees. I would just like, that would be my guess. Uh, but that guess is based purely on my gut. <laughs> I could not find, like, I was trying to look up these schools, but like the schools are pretty like locked down at this point. Not sure. Um, if it was a bachelor's or an, uh, associates for your RN, if anyone knows, let me know. Um, <laughs> we should all get a secret tattoo of, oh, good. Thanks, Scott. Yes. It was ADN programs. We should all get a secret tattoo of validity. <laughs> you get it when you like go to nursing school and like somehow we keep it secret. It's like on your clavicle. You're like, here you go. <laughs> Showing your patients, your clavicle. You're like, look, we've got it. I've got the deets. I've got the tattoo, the secret handshake, something like that. Um, that would be great. Uh, um, uh, 
grassroots are and said, MSA, I wondered the same, but after I spent hours reading all the indictments, it's clear that these students knew they did not attend class or clinical. Yeah. Um, I am not, like I said, I just, I refuse to believe that you could go through something and then being asked, right. When you go to sit for the NCLEX, you're asked, did you do all these clinical hours? And you would have to lie at that point and be like, wait, there were clinical hours. Like I had to take classes for this. No, there is no way that these people were just being taken advantage of like blindly. And they didn't know, you know what I mean? Um, no. Uh, so I know you're saying, yes, perhaps they didn't know they aren't Americans from the beginning. Cause you know, you presume they knew, um, that's not right. No, you, it asks you on the exam, right? So, and you don't have to agree with me, but in my opinion, it asks you on the exam. Did you do these clinical things? Uh, and if you didn't, you shouldn't say yes. And, uh, if that's too sketchy, right. And this is too high of stakes. Like, no, we're not immediate jail, <laughs> immediate jail. Um, uh, Dr. Asha FNP said, why did they continue to allow these schools to submit students when their NCLEX pass rates were 10%? I think that's how they caught them was if you've seen in the news, cause I'd seen things in the news over the last like couple of months, right. Um, that said, uh, Florida nursing schools were having some really atrocious passing rates. And I think these, maybe these are some of the schools. I think that might've started to be what tipped them off. But here we are, you know, the department, the Florida board of nursing, um, the Florida board of nursing needs to have some serious investigation put into it. And if we're being real though, uh, seeing, so I'm kind of, I work in more of like the education side right now and, uh, it's a mess. <laughs> it's a mess. Friends. It's, uh, Nursing education, you know how you, when you're going through school, you're like, is every school this disorganized and chaotic? That's every school, right? And um, it's a mess all the way to the top, my dudes. So I can see how this would slip through the cracks. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, wait, crap, crap. But they've known about it for a long time. So, uh, so that's where we are. So first topic, what do we think? Um, immediate jail. Most of you said yes. Any comments? Let me know. Do you think that they should have known even if they didn't know? Right. Cause that's the argument that a lot of people, um, that like MSA is making a lot of people like they're saying, Hey, no, maybe they just got totally duped. Again, I'm not, I just, mm -mm. no, no. I think you should have known. You can do a lot of things in life, but you can't do that. Let me know. <coughs> And we can respectfully disagree if needed. I think I might've just unmuted coughed into the mic. And if I did, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, that's where we are on that. Next up, we need like a, whoosh, if you guys watch Emily D Baker's channel, she has like a whoosh, for a new topic. Um, yeah, <laughs> mom, they knew. Hi, mom and nurse. Um, I think, yeah, a cheater is a cheater. Yeah, you can't go through that and be like, oh, I don't know what's happening. Um, <laughs> new topic. So that was fun. I have the argue or the actual, like, I don't even know what the fancy term for it is, whatever this article was that we were looking at from the department of justice. I have that link down below. If you would care to peruse it, uh, you can go and look at all the different names of all the different things. And, um, there we go. We've got it. Um, uh, <laughs> Mr. Midwife's calling for a palate cleanser. We'll have a palate cleanser after the next one because the next one is kind of justice. It's not something that's like bad with the world. Uh, it's just justice, right? Um, we have, so I don't care uh, about essential oils if you love them or hate them to be totally careful, like true. I think they're, they smell good, right? Um, we're going to be talking about doTERRA. Have you seen this? Um, oh, where'd it go? Did I stop sharing it? I sure. Oh, view this one instead. There we go. doTERRA. They sell essential oils. It's a multi-level marketing scheme. Totally against those because most, almost everyone loses money in them. They're super duper predatory. I've seen a lot of people I know and love and a lot of my patients get totally screwed over by MLMs. We don't like the MLM game. Okay. Because it's predatory and most people lose money. Um, so I fall, I'm deeply involved in 
anti MLM uh, YouTube uh, after. So one of my patients got like totally screwed up. Like I kept seeing patients that were like buying into these scams and uh, I got so mad. And so then I got deeply involved in that. But what happened here? So doTERRA sells essential oils, right? Um, Essential oils, I'm all about it. They smell great, right? We are here for that. They, you know, I am like, I've done the whole, like, what do you put on like lavender or peppermint or something? For migraines, I've been here for that. Jules A, thanks for the super sticker. I appreciate it. It's a smiley face that's winking in case you can't see it. Um, I think I'm the only one who, oh yeah, on stream yard, you have to like go and hide. But thanks, I appreciate you. Um, and you, I think they, they can do great things. Aromatherapy, here for it, not against it, okay? Have issues when people start saying that COVID or anything can be cured by essential oils, right? Especially when you ingest them. I'm like... My dudes, a lot of those can like really burn you. Let's not do that. Okay, let's let's not do that. So what happened here was uh, three people, two physicians and one uh, nurse practitioner were distributing, selling doTERRA. And they said, they came out with statements and told their platforms, their titles. I'm a doctor. I think one was a pediatrician. Um... It was Elizabeth Bacot, Laura Bush, and Dr. Tina Wong. They each had to pay $15,000 because they came out and said, I am this healthcare professional, and I think this is how you can prevent COVID, uh, treat it, and alleviate its symptoms, right? So this was like a total triple whammy. You could do all of these things by ingesting certain essential oils, by putting them on your skin, and by diffusing them. They were encouraging this in children, we're not here for that. We are not like, oh, um, they were going on zoom calls, attracting lots and lots of hundreds of, of attendees, um, having like a protocols meeting where they basically said like, Hey, you do this and that's illegal. So the FTC, which is the federal trade commission, um, uh, says you can't say something cures something. If it doesn't, that's illegal. And they got a slap on the wrist. Truthfully, this is just a slap on the wrist. These people are fairly high up, I think, in this company. So they make lots and lots and lots and lots of money. Um, so $15,000 to them is probably like, meh, nothing to write home about. But at least they did something about it, and it made me happy. So there we go. Please don't eat essential oils. If you want to diffuse them, please do. They smell great. Um, smell great. They can do great things for, like, aromatherapy, I think, can be really calming. Um you know, it can, I have had, I've used it for like headache pain and like all that sorts of stuff. We used to have a great aromatherapist who would come into our hospital and set up different things that were really helpful for patients. And they would like, like make little roller balls that people could do for like anti-strat here for it. Like don't hate on that at all. I think that's great. Uh, just don't eat it. <laughs> like <coughs> probably don't eat it and don't come online and say, Hey, you can treat, you know, prevent, treat, and uh, do all the COVID things about it. Cause that's just bad. And it makes our profession look bad. Yeah. They should have known better. A thousand percent. They should have known better. Oh, so, but a little bit of justice, right? $15,000, like I said, not like a huge thing, but that's where they have. Um, yikes. Also, I have a problem with, um, this is where I went into issues with like functional medicine is functional medicine tries to sell you a bunch of supplements, right. That are really just benefiting immediately. Like the person selling the supplements is the one making a lot of the money. I think that's a backwards, a sketchy model. Um, when the person trying to sell you all the stuff is the one benefiting. That's where we run into some ethical weirdness. So this is rubs me the weird way when your healthcare provider is trying to hawk things like this. I don't think healthcare people should be involved in selling of supplements and all that, but that's just my opinion. You let me know what you think. I'm like, uh, <laughs> most normal people who don't like, I'm sure some people out there get paid money from pharmaceutical companies somehow to like prescribe their drugs or get like bribes. You know what I mean? Like, uh, if you sell a bunch of my drug, then 
I'll give you like fancy presents. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. I've never heard of it. I'm sure it doesn't. All I ever got was like Chipotle. (laughs) They're like, I'll bring you Chipotle. If you listen and hear me talk about this. But as a rule, most people in healthcare, you aren't getting like presents for prescribing medicine, right? No one ever was like, wow, you did a great job prescribing blood pressure medicine and a torvastatin for cholesterol. Have money. No. So I don't like that tie back to it. I don't think you should be financially benefiting from a patient taking medicine that you prescribed. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sandy, I agree. Medical people should not be selling drugs or supplements. Uh, too easy to have a conflict of interest. Absolutely. Um, humility has said I've been a herbalist for decades. Essential oils are wonderful. We cannot claim that it cures. It is not safe to use without instruction and a protect practitioner there to guide. Exactly. So you just can't say, like I said, I have no issue with it. Um, I have an issue with it when they come on the internet and say, eat this, uh, and don't really provide actual guidance and don't have training in it. And when they make health claims that they can't, I think like they can be a great supportive measure and they should just be explained as such. Right. So that's where we are. Um, these people are kind of just like yuck to like, cause maybe I was like, maybe I'm being harsh, but I wasn't. Here's like one of the people and her whole thing is just talking about how, you know, heaven forbid I ate one chocolate chip and I felt so bloated. I needed to cleanse my body for like, you know, go on 8 million detoxes. Um, <laughs> because I ate a cookie at Christmas. Like I was so blow. I'm ashamed ashamed (laughs) shame stick. Uh, so that's the type of people we're dealing with. We don't support that, right? We do not support that. (sighs) No, thank you. No, thank you. (laughs) No, thank you. I have newt to toe toe of crow. (laughs) We can make you all sorts of potions, right? I have kind of like a potions jar in my car. Uh, I just have this random capsule of medicine and it's rather than having like multiple cases of medicine in my car, don't do this. Please don't do this. This is probably bad because then it heats up. I just put them all in one bottle. It's like a tiny little Tylenol bottle. It's mostly not Tylenol. Kind of just like shake it out. It's like a goodie bag. (laughs) What am I going to get today? (laughs) It's a potion. I don't feel very good. Let's try taking this. (laughs) Hope I don't fall asleep. I know what the colors are. I don't have very many things in there. Like I said, don't do that. But I call it my potion bottle. <laughs> so do my children, which is also probably bad. Like, oh, mommy's taking one of her potions. Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> everything's fine. Everything's fine. Nobody ever, nobody investigate this. Okay. Oh, good. I'm not the only one. Sandy does this too. Adrian uh, is tired. <laughs> Adrian has a lot going on in her life. Irene said, where's Adrian? Adrian is like, does you guys know, like she does 12 million things. So she's busy and tired, <laughs> but did she like apologize? She's like, I won't be there tonight. I was like, you don't have to apologize to me. <laughs> and when I say that it's a requirement to be here, it's like more of a joke. Okay. A little bit more of a joke. Um, if you do like being here though, give a little likey likey. It tells the YouTube gods that you like it and other people might too. So there we go. Um, we have it. Reinhardt also does this chronic illness mandates it. A little potion bottle. <laughs> a lot of us do it. My mom did it. That's why I do it. <laughs> Just kind of like shake things out. You're like, I remember being like a look. I'm like, what color do you want? <laughs> what are we doing here? She's like, oh, definitely don't touch that one. I'm like, oh, okay. This is fine. Um, are you ready for, <laughs> sounds very witchcraftish. I have questions. This goes with my like whole vibe, right? I have my like everyone in my neighborhood. Remember when I built, I don't think I showed it on here. I built this like fence out of sticks. So I was like, I have a lot of sticks. I need something for my blackberries to trellis up on. So I built, I like tied, I got log sticks, like tree branches, and then vines. We have these huge, crazy thick vines that are like, you know, four or five inches wide, chopped some down. And I made myself like a little I don't know, garden, <laughs> like, what is it called? Something for my, like my, my blackberries to climb up. Everyone calls it my witch's corner. <laughs> They're like, Oh, like you have a nice little like witch's corner over there. <laughs> I'm like, thanks. I will summon things. <laughs> it's fine. Oh yeah. <laughs> the jazzy nurse. Liz, <laughs> Liz is going to be the lady. That's not the color of my blood pressure pill. 
in the nursing home. Oh, I might have be like, oh, that's a fun new one. Let's see what they, if we take blue and yellow, what happens? Let's just take them both and find out. Um, I am, Scott, starting to plan my garden, my little witch garden. <laughs> I can't figure out, I don't get a lot of sun on my property. So I'm trying to figure out where, uh, where I'm going to put my garden and it's going to look really janky this year. And I, it's just going to look really rough for a little while. Everyone's going to have to bear with me because it has to grow into itself. It's going to look rough, but I'm going to look, I told my neighbors, I was like, I'm going to look a lot more like a witch <laughs> before this gets better. And I need you to bear with me. Okay. Um, so I'll keep you apprised of all of my, all of my witch gardening. <laughs> I wasn't going to plant herbs. Maybe I'll start like an herbalist garden. Um, okay. Ready for our palate cleanser. <laughs> oh, speaking of wilderness and yards, we have a lot of deer in my yards, but do we possibly, I didn't share the right tab. Do we possibly have zombie deer? <laughs> so zombie deer, um, is a disease spreading across <laughs> the U S here's what you should know. Okay. Everyone pay, pay attention. Is there such thing as a zombie deer? Yes. And they might be your newest neighbors. I have a lot of deer. <laughs> Could they be zombie deer? Unknown. Since the first report of zombie deer 50 years ago, did you guys know about zombie deer? Let me know. I did not know anything about zombie deer. I did not know that this was a possibility. Did not know this was something I should be worried about, but here we are. Zombie deer is a disease also known as chronic wasting disease and is a type of prion disease that affects deer, elk, and moose. Okay. Prions are small, abnormal, infectious proteins that cause proteins in the body to fold abnormally. Not good. Especially in the brain and spinal cord. Not good. This sounds like, like the brain eating amoeba, right? Oh my gosh. What if you lived in a place with a lot of stagnant water? Like in a marsh. And you had brain eating amoeba and zombie deer. I'd never go outside. The disease gets more serious as it progresses and it's always fatal. That's very sad. A lot of concern for this. It occurred years ago, but it seems to be getting worse. Um, a similar variant is the mad cow disease, which is from England. And humans, it can rarely spread to humans in the Kreutzfeldt Jacob disease. That sounds terrible. That's awful. Um, so this is happening. So it is spread direct through um, direct contact with body tissue or fluids, okay, of the dead deer who had this. Once introduced, it spreads quickly to other animals. Uh, even after an infected animal dies, the risk of it spreading to another animal can last for a long time. We don't want that. So, um, you know, I don't think... Uh, it can spread because I was worried about my dog. <laughs> I was like, oh, my dog's way too scared to ever like, you know, in my mind, I was like, what if Holly wanted to protect me from a mad zombie deer? And I was like, <laughs> Holly would be like the first one, my dog back inside. She'd be like, <laughs> no, thank you. Back inside. I don't know if dogs, if like dogs can get this, but watch out for your puppies. Be careful not to eat this food, right? Um, I think it can kind of like spread to um, people, right? If the disease were able to spread to people, the most likely way to be it would be to be in eating infected deer or elk. Uh, and so check. They recommend that if you are someone who hunts or something like that, check the CDC. And you can get tests and you can, if you, it'll tell you if it's like common in your area. So you can test your meat, Uh <laughs> before you eat it so that you don't get a zombie disease. So that was our palate cleanser. <laughs> you know, it's great. Everything is going fine. Yes. Everything's fine. This is fine. When your palate cleanser is zombie deer. Um, nasty. It sounds awful. Sandy, very deadly and highly symptomatic gruesome deaths. This sounds absolutely horrific. Like I know I'm laughing, but like it sounds absolutely horrific that you just like your brain proteins fold in on themselves and then they dissolve. No, thank you. No, no, thank you. No, thank you. Um, most good hunters get every, um, kill tested. That's good. That's good. That's not, 
been the case of a lot of people I have known, but you know more responsible people than I do. And I'm proud of you. Um, I've seen a few and it's bad. Oh no, no, that's bad. Um, rabies, which does grow. Okay. So rabies sounds like it's a prion disease. Thanks nurse Scott. Um, <laughs> um, uh, I think it, most virus prions are species specific. Don't quote me on that. Oh, we will quote you to it. We will quote it you and we will, we will absolutely hold you to that. <laughs> Zombie deer explains, <laughs> explains Mr. Midwife symptoms. Oh, Irene, I totally get it. One of my pugs gets triggered by a leaf. <laughs> my dog like puts on a good front. Like she acts like she's going to protect you. She'll like, she's tiny. She's like 29 pounds, right? gets all like huffed up and like, will like act like she's going to defend you and like gets out in front of you and like, you know, will bark or whatever and seem like I'm going to actually like defend you. And then immediately when people step like within 10 feet of you, she's like in between your legs or like crawling up your legs. And you're like, wow, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> oh, we went, we were doing so well. And now we're here. Now we're here. All right. Everyone pause. Let me know if you've ever seen a zombie deer. I'm going to go get a cough drop real quick. I will be right back. I don't know if I pause too early. I should have left you a music. I brought music because I thought I was like, I might need to take like a nose blowing break or something today, or I might run out of cough drops because I only brought 14 and apparently all day I've eaten 14 cough drops. So that's reassuring. All right. All right. Yeah. We should have brought, I thought earlier to myself, that was one of my, my ADHD thoughts throughout the day. I was like, Oh, music would be a nice interlude in case I need to step out for a minute. Nope. Didn't do it. Didn't get there. I can hear you all the way from here, Scott, all the way from here. Okay. Moving from our zombie deer, which is very sad, but not as serious to a more sad, more serious uh, situation. Um, Utah, Utah is being Utah and, uh, has joined the slew of other States. They're the first one this year, uh, to ban gender affirming healthcare for transgender youth. We're not shocked. We're sad. We're not shocked. Utah is uh, very, very, you know, uh, they would tend to do this. I feel like they have kind of gone against like all medical advice, which just infuriates me that we let people who don't have medical backgrounds make medical decisions. Um, so what they ended up doing was on Saturday, uh, Utah's governor um, signed bills that banned youth from receiving gender affirming health care. Um, and then they also slapped in, it was like a weird bill. It also like made it so that you could receive family like scholarship for education outside the public school system. So if you wanted to send your kids to like private school, they would like give you a scholarship for it. Maybe, I don't know. It seemed like a weird bill to include in there. Um, this person uh, who had not taken a public position on transgender care. So, uh, I mean, hello, we, what do we expect from Utah? Um, signed a day after a legislative, if you live in Utah and you are a science loving human who, you know, supports letting people just take care of themselves how they need to, then sorry, that wasn't aimed at you. It was aimed at everyone else. Um, signed it into law. So, uh, yikes. Um, basically what it does is it says that if you are not already receiving care, it's poorly written. First of all, we should just say that it's poorly written. It's not very specific. Um, and it basically says anyone who is now, if you're already receiving care, you can kind of keep getting it right. 
but anyone else coming in, you cannot get it for hormones. You can't get surgery, which not many youth were getting, especially surgery, uh, at all. Um, you also can't get puberty blockers. And that's the big, uh, thing that just, I don't think they understand. I mean, I'm sure they do. I think they're hateful and letting their religious, uh, cause Utah is like pretty religious, right? I think I saw, I was watching a live about this yesterday and they were saying that a lot of, um, I think of like the 85, I don't know, people like someone, like a huge proportion of the legislature in Utah are Mormon and Mormon is like a part of like a sect of Christianity. Right. And they're like, they're anti-transgender, like anything that's, you know, because like, Oh, how dare you? Oh, you, Utah, um, very religious state. And they're letting their religious views come in and dictate their healthcare, which don't we love that? Um, love that. I don't know why you can't just say, Hey, <laughs> Uh, this is, I don't want to do that. So I'm not going to do it. And if you want to inflict that hatred onto your own child, that's fine. But, you know, let me care for my child, how I would like to No, they, that's, they don't, <laughs> they don't want that. Um, won't let us do that. So basically what they said was you can't have puberty. You can't have any actual therapy other than like cognitive, like therapy, therapy. If you have, um, a transgender child, right. And this is a problem. We've done a whole live stream on it. Um, we've had a lot of conversations around this. We've had, I've been really lucky to have a couple of people who are part of the, um, who are trans, who have been on here, who have talked about it. I will leave those videos linked down below. Um, the problem. So just like briefly why this is a problem is one to not have puberty blockers. If someone is experiencing this, and to go through puberty in a gender that you are like, I am not this is horrifically damaging, right? We have, we have so much data showing that if you are transgender, if you, and you are not supported, your likelihood of at baseline, I think this statistic is like, let me pull it up. 48% of wanting to unalive yourself, um, 82, um, percent of transgender individuals have considered killing themselves. That is horrific, right? 40% have attempted. I've linked this study down below. It goes in, it just looks at what are the factors that are protective against people actually trying to do that. Protective factors are supporting that person and having feeling like their immediate support system was supportive and they got the help, like the care that they needed. That would involve in a lot of ways, hormone blockers. Hormone blockers are not surgery. They are not anything like that. It is literally saying like, I am not going to develop what we would call like the secondary sex characteristics of, um, like, so if you are, um, you know, you're not going to get breasts, you're not going to get your like facial hair, things like that. Uh, it waits on those. Um, and they, so it's not even introducing necessarily like opposing hormones. And that's, I think one of the most frustrating things about it. Uh, one of the criticisms of it is some people, it can decrease, um, in some people, your reproductive ability later, but it's not like people are just taking these willy nilly. This is a very serious conversation that has been followed. Like people are specialized in this. It's not a willy nilly decision to go on these medications and it is life-saving for a lot of people because can you imagine if you were like, no, like like you are a girl, but, and then all of a sudden you're getting like facial hair, your voice is lowering and you're a teenager and then you're not supported right by your family. <laughs> Do we wonder why the outcomes are so poor? Um, so it's just hatred to, we have to not allow these things to happen, right? It's, uh, bigoted. It is horrific. And we are going so far backwards. And I think the thing that is the most infuriating is they say it's, they're doing this to protect the children as if this process is not already difficult, as if it is not already expensive. Um, as if this is something that parents are like forcing their children to do or like, Oh, my kid decided like came home one day and like said they wanted to do this. So the next day I took him to this place and we pumped him through a full of hormones. That's not what happens. <laughs> this is such a long process. Uh, every single medical organization, every single one, uh, supports 
gender affirming care, which is when we're doing puberty blockers or doing those other things, which is by the way, very, very few teen, teen, like people under the age of 18 are getting like surgery and hormones. Hormones are for when they're, some people are like, you know, 16, 17. Um, and it's much like, it's not a willy nilly decision. It just infuriates me. All of these people, all of these science medical people um, support it. And they say, hey, yeah, even though we don't have like the endless amount of data that we would love, they're working on it. They're researching things. There is enough data to show that it's saving people's lives because they're not trying to exit permanently by themselves, um, which is important. You know, like that's... <laughs> when the alternative is that, but I feel like people looking at this law didn't even look at this. All of these, the American Academy of Pediatrics, American Academy of Family Physicians, American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, um, American Medical Association, literally American Endocrine Society, every single person, every single healthcare thing says you should do this. Um, that having gender affirming care, uh, for people of all ages is the way to go. Did they look at that when they made this law? Nope. They were like, well, <laughs> I'm a bigot and I would like to share, make everyone go with my, however I lean and let's do that. It was, I think most frustratingly a doctor who introduced it, um, who is now part of Senator Mike Kennedy, a Republican family doctor is the one that brought this which makes it even more frustrating. So they just kind of like touted a healthcare professional that it was of course going to toe their line. And then they can say like, Oh, a healthcare problem, um, a healthcare person brought this. Uh, and it's just like, it's horrific. Um, and the people like Tanya, I see you saying there's not enough data. We have plenty of data showing us that if we don't do it, then everyone is, then people are permanently exiting an 80% attempted exiting rate, like or an 80% rate of ideation of wanting to do that is horrific. So in my opinion, and the opinion of all of the other science people <laughs> saying, Hey, if we go through this rigorous process and you still would like to do this and you want to just block your other hormones. And then you can decide later if you want to actually let that hormone in. Cause like that's reversible, right? Puberty blockers are partially reversible. The part that's not is potential fertility down the road, which you could then seek other fertility treatment for. Right. So when we bind, when we like weigh the options of permanently exiting or, and, or letting someone do something that is a very informed decision that is not taken lightly, you don't have to do it if you don't want, but do not sit there and tell me that there's no risk, right? Because that is you sticking your head in the sand and saying like that you just don't want to listen to what the people who are actually living it are telling you, right? It's not misinformation. Tanya, I'm just going to mute you because you're just lying. <laughs> um, so it's not misinformation. Um, it's if you don't want to see it that way, like I ask you to really ask yourself why you are so hell bent on having that ideology, right? Then if you don't want to support your own child in that way, then don't do it. The data is not on your side. Um, and like, it's not a willy nilly conversation where people are just, like I said, like throwing their kid out there and being like, let's just do this. Like, if you think that, please, please reach out to, any organization, I have linked many in the description um, of places where you can get stories and actually connect to people who have lived this. Uh, and it is not a willy nilly conversation, right? Um, just it's not. So uh, do look into it. And I say that as someone who used to have very different views on it, right? And then you actually start to meet people in real life and you're like, oh, wow, like, you aren't just like, you know, throwing things all over and being like, yes, like, let's just put everything like in our children. Like I used to have very different views on it. And then, like I said, you meet people and you realize, wow, wow. <laughs> Yikes. Um, here we go. Uh, and so that's where we are. So they came out with this. They were saying that it's for the children, which is just even more infirm, like infuriating. Um, 
Jasmine Nurse said, so is there a way to affirm someone without chemicals or can they have time to decide as they get older? So that's what puberty blockers basically are trying to do is delaying it until you, they are saying they're a little older, right? Like let's avoid having you develop breast tissue. Let's avoid having you um, have your voice get way lower and getting facial hair until you're a little older, we won't start giving you opposite chemicals, right? We won't start giving you, if you are, um, like if you are born what they consider like male, they aren't going to start giving you estrogen or the other way around. They're going to wait a little bit and see what you want to do. But doing this, like, could you just put yourself in that situation and imagine that if you're like, I'm a girl and you start growing a bunch of facial hair, like, and we could give you something that would help you just delay that a little bit, right? Like, that's what this is, right? This isn't saying let's go drastic. This is saying, let me just give you space to figure this out. You know what I mean? Um, cause that's where we are. Um, indigo girl, they're not like completely harmless. The side effects, like I said, are reversible. The one big thing I believe it is for if you were male transitioning to female sperm can be affected, um, if you, for later reproduction things. But I think, I mean, if it was my child, I would prefer you to be, feel supported in your decision currently so that you can one day live to maybe want children than to want to exit permanently because that's the biggest thing that people usually quote. They also quote that bone density might be affected. Uh, and there is probably, I mean, I would assume with these things like bone density might be affected. Um, Again, I would rather you have to take some calcium supplements and maybe have to take a bone, like something like we give people when they're older and they need stuff for like osteoporosis. I'd like you to reach that age where you would actually need that versus we know, like we know that people who do not feel supported, especially in their youth, they harm themselves. And that is, uh, horrifying, right? Um, so the goal is to reduce harm there. The unknown are these wildly re like, do we have a t as much data as we would like on these types of things? No, but we do have data on how much people are harming themselves if they don't get the care. Okay. So till people are blue in the face, they will try to tell you this is, you know, we don't know everything about these medicines and no, we don't but we do know what happens if we don't. And like Sandy said, alive is always better. Like, please just put yourself in the situation of these people and like, think of reframing it from that perspective, right? Of this isn't a rush decision. This is a, if you feel, um, so un, like, I don't know if, if these people have been in this situation for a while, puberty changes so many things with your body and it would get, it gets so much worse. We know that the gender dysmorphia tends to get so much worse as people's bodies are changing so much when they're teenagers. So I have a ton of research or resources in the description. If you want to check it out, if you are a family affected by this, I've linked some resources for parents and families of kids who are going to be affected directly by this law, as well as a place to track like places to keep track of bills it, that are going to affect this type of thing going forward. Um, if you want to write to your representatives and being like, stop making healthcare decisions when you're not a healthcare provider and maybe listen to all the healthcare people who are screaming at you to stop doing this. Uh, but you won't. So there's that. Um, there's that. Oh, can you tell this gets me so mad? Um, it gets me so mad. I just think it's absolutely ridiculous that we, uh, are making these decisions for people. Right. And it makes me so frustrated that they say it's in the name of protecting children. Like the governor said, while we understand our words will be of little comfort to those who disagree with us. You're right. D bag. We sincerely hope that we can treat our transgender family with more love and respect as we work to better understand the science and consequences behind these procedures. Um, what you feel, what they just completely refuse to look at is the opposite of that, which is we know what happens when we don't do anything. And it's not good. So they don't want to see that. This is another situation where people are claiming it's for the children. It's not for the children. 
Like let's not, let us not be deluded. This is not for the betterment of children. We're not listening to anyone who, you know, (laughs) anyone who is based in healthcare science who said that's actually not for the betterment of children. And they're like, I'm going to stick my head in the sand and pretend you didn't say that. So that's where that is. I've also linked the bill. If you want to read it, I don't recommend it. (laughs) It's very boring. Um, but it does, here's where it specifies. Cause I had seen some questions, um, that when they say hormonal transgender treatment, it means administering, prescribing or supplying or effectuating anything related to sex change, uh, which is how they throw in the hormone blockers in there. Cause at first I was like, maybe it won't affect that wrong, wrong. So all of that, all of that is listed down below. Um, Yeah there we go. Uh, (laughs) I don't know, please, please let's live in a world where healthcare decisions are not decided by (laughs) random people who are in government. Oh, oh, I am so over it. Um, yeah, like, and it's all from the same people who are always like, I'm anti big government. I'm like, then stop. (laughs) Oh, and yes, Scott's right. Go learn about other people's experiences. It's part of what makes life so rich. I, um, yeah, like I said, I did not grow up thinking any of these things. I lived in a very different bubble (laughs) than I am now in. And, uh, yeah, (laughs) uh, it has been eye opening to realize that a lot of the things I grew up thinking. So if you find yourself unable to think outside of the box at all on this, I urge you to go and seek out other stories than the narrative you have been fed, because you might realize the narrative you have been fed is a very limited one. Okay. Very limited one. We have no separation of certain and state. (laughs) None. It is gone. Um, okay. Uh, here's the website. Um, if you live in Utah, uh, every state has, seems to have one of these, this kind of goes, It gives you important dates to track, which legislative session you should be watching, what their wins were, what their losses were, all of that type of stuff. And every state um, has one. So if you want to check that out, I thought it was helpful. I linked it below. Here is how we're going to sleep at night. Because after that, I was like, I hate everything. (laughs) I hate everything. (laughs) Like, how am I going to sleep at night? Not to fear. Apparently we've developed a new type of sleep thing. Um, green noise used to be white noise. Then it was brown noise. Now we have green noise, right? Uh, this is one of our mouthwashes. <laughs> I, I saw this. I was literally so angry. I was like, it was keeping me up last night as I raged about this in my head. And I was like, oh, I can't sleep. And then I saw this and I was like, wow, <laughs> wow, here we go. Um, so now in case you need to help find help sleeping tonight, because you're just as mad as I am. First of all, congratulations. I succeeded. It's my goal to get you just as mad as me so we can change the world. Um, I've heard of white noise. Now we have green noise, brown noise, all the noise. Green noise, you might be appreciative of. Um, if you need help concentrating, if you, uh, it's at like 500 hertz in case you're like a frequency human, that sounds like soft ocean waves, waterfalls and rivers that all fall. All of these are green noise, okay? Um so there you go. You can try out green noise today. You can YouTube it. There's lots of YouTube channels that have all sorts of green noise. We suggest getting a timer <laughs> so that you can maintain your sleep and so that this can keep going all night. Great. Green noise. Um, do you guys listen to noise at night? White noise is for insomnia, especially if you like a noisier area and a higher risk pollution <laughs> noise, higher risk of noise pollution while you sleep. Um, So this is not for you if you live in a crowded area, right? This is maybe you if you live in nature with a zombie deer, okay? Pink and green noise may be helpful for facilitating sleep onset sleep onset based on your preference. Sounds like green noise can be helpful for drowning out outside noise. You may also find it soothing to focus while your thoughts are racing. So this could be something good to have in the background, okay? Scott always has a fan on. Mr. Midwife has a fan on. Um they, we always have a fan on and I like to fall asleep listening to like ASMR type stuff where people are like making weird clicking and tapping noises. <laughs> my husband thinks it's crazy. He's like, what are you listening to? I'm like, I don't know. My people are like clicking on things. <laughs> oh, love it. Um, love it. Um, there's a lot of like 
interesting YouTube channels out there, my friends <laughs> for falling asleep, highly recommend. But if you do have like an ADHD type of thing, do look into like, um, Karuna ASMR, like it's not all people just being scantily clad on the internet. Cause that's apparently a trope that I didn't know of. My husband's like, you watch ASMR. I'm like, what is it? He's like, isn't it just like people like with their boobs out? I was like, wait, what? No, what are you watching? Um, they just make like little clickety clacky noises, like tapping on things, like wooden things. I don't know. It's not, it's like very soothing friends. If you have ADHD and need weird background noise, just try it. Okay. Karuna ASMR recommend go try it out. All right. And for our final, we've crossed over all of our hurdles. We've talked about all the things that are going to give me a, um, magnetic minds. Matt likes pink noise for sleep. Let us know. If you have a good ASMR channel for me, let me know. We've crossed over. Okay. We've, we've made it. We're over our hill where I don't have anything else. Well, I'm sure I can find something here to get mad about. Um, have you guys heard about this? This is just funny. Uh, I promise this is Mr. Beast. Who's a YouTuber who has like, I think the most YouTube subscribers maybe of anyone is many, many millions. Um, he paid for a thousand people to have cataract surgery because, you know, we have to pay that. And then people got mad at him. So a bunch of people couldn't see because they had cataracts, little like discs in their eyes, right? That don't let the light fall through. And he paid for their surgeries, which are like lots of money, right? And then people were mad that he was like, well, you took advantage of them. Like you shouldn't have done this. So the internet's angry with this YouTuber who, in my opinion, did something nice. Let me know what you think. Try to do something nice. Um, and they were like, well, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to like be exploited on the internet in order to get cataract surgery. And his point back at them was like, well, we should live in a healthcare system where people just like get surgery, like where they can afford to get surgery for being blind so that then they can be like a member of society who can work a lot more effectively because they can see right? Um, no, people did not like that answer. They were like, no. <laughs> so, um, so this is happening. Uh, YouTubers are apparently the new way that we're going to receive healthcare in this country. Who knew? Always a fun day when we have that going on. Um, so if you ever find yourself in a healthcare problem, maybe just reach out to a giant YouTuber. I'm not at that level. I cannot help you. I can't even pay for my own <laughs> healthcare. Okay. Um, please don't, call me maybe one day, you know, one day, but, um, just reach out to your local YouTuber and be like, Hey, <laughs> here we go. Uh, will you please help me pay for this essential surgery? Because America, um, so that happened. Uh, is your internet mad about it? Mine was laughing at the people who are mad about it, but that doesn't shock me because my internet is very much like how, <laughs> how do we need this? Like, how is this something that we actually need? How can people just not have life-saving surgery? I don't get it. Um, so there we are. <laughs> there we are. People will always find a reason to complain. Boho is right. Um, are the people who got the procedure complaining? No, no one complained who got it. They were like, Oh my gosh, I needed this surgery. I could not see. Now I can see. <sighs> Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. I had so many patients guys. And then a lot of people were like, this doesn't happen. I have so had so many patients who had cataracts that could not get them fixed because they could not afford it. So I've seen this, I've seen people have a lot worse surgeries that they need that they couldn't get because they couldn't afford it. So <laughs> the YouTuber healthcare system is not as strong as we would like it. Uh, we got to work on it. Okay. We've got to work on it. All right, friends, that's where we are. <laughs> That's where we are. Um, thanks for bearing with me. That was a roller coaster. I had a lot of big feelings. Um, a lot of big, big feelings uh, going on this week. Uh, <laughs> here we are. Um, yeah. Tell me your big feelings. I hope you have a lovely rest of your week. We will not be having a live tomorrow uh, because I won't be around. And then we won't have one next We'll have a Tuesday one next week like this, uh, but we won't have one on Friday um, because I will be on a work trip. So we'll be a little at my way for a while. Here we are. Um, insurance, if you, but you have, if insurance would cover a cataract surgery, maybe <laughs> if they deemed it needed, 
but you have to reach your deductible first. And for a lot of people, that's like $8,000. And I don't know about you, <laughs> don't even have $8,000. So I'm like, well, I don't know how this would work. <laughs> Here we are. But I sure do pay into all that insurance every month. So like I can not use it because <laughs> I pay so much for it. And then I don't have any money left over to use it. So there we are. Do hit the like button on the way out. I appreciate all of you for being here and going through my rants with me. Me not feeling good makes me even more cranky than I normally am. So that was good. You all made it. Um, yes. Go fund me is how we fund healthcare in this country. Isn't that cute? Here we are. All right. Thanks for being here. I appreciate all of you. I hope, hope you go and, uh, it's made you just as mad as me and I will see you next time. Remember that you are not alone. You can do all the hard things and you're more than enough. We mixed up the order. It's good to change things up sometimes. There we go. <laughs> Bye guys.